This is Lala Lish from Mobile Civil. I'm your host on Mobile Civil and the show today. Now, on this podcast, I'm focused really on our personal development and self improvement topics and with the occasion of amazing guys. So, welcome to the show to share the insights on topics and subjects on the personal development. Now, this has been a worldwide career for me today, and also worthwhile having these guys, you know, share profound insights on subjects and topics on the personal development. And self-improvement, today's show, I have Nicole Odom Hagnight, who is a social entrepreneur and, and has been a blended mom, or blended um, bonus family mom since 2013. Hi, Nicole. Hi, how are you? I'm so well, Thank, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. Now, um, Nicole, thank you once again for coming to the show today. Right up. Now, Nicole, being a blended bonus family, because that's what we want to be talking about today, right? It's really an interesting topic for discussion. Now, I'm looking forward to your um, both your experience uh, as the mom and also your professional insights on this topic of ex- um, discussion. Now, being a blended bonus family mom takes a lot of work. Can you tell me how you find yourself here? Uh, being a mom, um, it just in it within itself is is a task and a chore on its own. Uh, being a bonus mom is definitely one um, to definitely write a journal uh, alone about. Um, it's a, it's definitely it, it, it's a glorious thing to um, have other children in that are up under your wing. Um, that you're now responsible for, um, that you have to show the way to, and they, they look up to you, they walk in your path. You have some challenges, you have a lot of hurdles, but there are glorious times that go along with that. Interesting. Now, um, is there anything like um, preventive um, parenting? Because I know that you also focus on that. Um, yeah, I do focus on preventive parenting, but my style is, you know, I don't do a lot of preaching to my kids. Um, I, I, I like to live a certain lifestyle. And for instance, um, my bonus kids um, that lived in the household were girls. I'm a woman. So instead of me being the preachy type of woman that uh, that's naggy, especially when they came in their teen in their teenage, um, I, I did a certain type of walk so they can emulate what I do. Instead of me saying, now you do this and you do that. A lot of people learn by by what they see. And so if I'm going to dress a certain way, they, they learn by watching how I dress or sometimes how I speak. My, my, my verbiage sometimes can get a little loose. <laughs> um, but if I am, my grandmother taught me to wear a slip when I walk out of the house with a certain type of skirt or dress. So you couldn't see my undergarments through my clothing. So expect them to emulate that. They ask me why I do that. So I can explain to them why. It's it's the things that as a woman that I, it's the unspoken that they notice. And I notice as the girls got older that they do and it's things that I do that I see them now as 20, 21, and 25 year olds that I like, I do that. <laughs> it, it's strange to see that. And I yeah. know that no one else taught them that because it's something special that I do. Oh, I but I never you. said it. I never said it to them, but it's something oh, that I do. It, well, um, what was it intentional? Was it was it intentional? It it, wow. it was. It, it's the it's the it was the strong it, it's the strong things that I, I wanted them to really pay attention to because as women we need to do certain things. We have to clean certain areas of our body. We have to wash a certain way. We have to walk a certain way. We have to do certain things or we have to clean 
we have to do certain things as women. And I wanted these young ladies to do certain things and to pay attention to certain areas, either of their body, of their rooms, of their house or whatever. And I think it's when you have a teenage girl or even boy, it's that unspoken that makes a big difference to them sometimes. Because if you nag and you tell them what to do as a teenager, you know, oh, whatever, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna pay attention to them. But if they see you doing it, it it's just that unspoken, it just makes a big difference. I know that, but really, Nico, um, what, 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 what's the place of open communication in this discussion here? Because I think that open communication is also important. Um, you can expect your children to um, just um, continue to emulate your actions, emulate your behavior without really um, communicating, right, what you're doing today. So it's not that we didn't have the communication. I think that if you're not that nagging, very nagging parent and See, I wasn't that nagging parent. My kids were able to still come to me and feel comfortable with coming to me because I had one that came to me and talked to me about some personal things that I never thought that we would have the conversation. And as the conversation was going on, my mouth was like, I can't believe we're sitting here talking about this. <laughs> And I was, I was honored to be having the conversation with the child. And I, I, was, I was just honored that the child chose me to share the most intimate secret with, um, especially since it wasn't my biological. I was honored to that fact. And I cherish that moment. Um, but again, it was me not being that preachy, me living my honest and true self, me making sure that they saw what a woman should be doing with her personal hygiene, with a man and and not being trashy or tacky or anything like that um but being respectful to them um but being there when they needed me and knowing and 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 knowing that that they could come to me at any given time for any reason now, Nicole, uh, Nicole, blended family is hard, right? So how can we understand the dynamics? It, it's very hard to understand the dynamics because each person in the blended family is, is their own. Every, just like everyone outside, whether blended family or not, they have their own personality. They come around at their own given time. Thank goodness in my blended family that the children, they, 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 they fell in love, you know, instantaneously. They were like kumbaya wow. right away. Yeah, they were kumbaya right away. Um, so that was a great thing. Um, we just had a, a rocky road because of some of the outside um, that, that, that came in. Um, a little early on in our relationship, but we managed to get over that hurdle. It took a little while, but we managed to get over that hurdle um, a little later on. And once we did, it, it, it everything just fell right into place. And our family is just doing great. Um, everybody is falling into place. Everybody is growing into their careers. Um, we have one left in college now we actually have two um my one of my um oldest son decided to go back to school um so everybody is just doing well we communicate with each other like we have one that's 
kind of left in school since my youngest son is still in, in college that is technically still at home um, because of breaks. But we work well with each other and the kids communicate and Christmases are still the same or holidays. Um, they come visit and we just mesh very well. Which is really a blessing. Yeah, it's really a blessing. Yeah, so for those who are in a blended family who may be going through a, a rocky road or maybe in the thick of things, um, you know, hopefully you will reach your rainbow or your pot of gold <laughs> at the end of that rainbow sometime soon. Just just keep praying and keep your head up and, you know, keep looking keep looking, you know, towards the sky and, you know, hopefully oh. you'll come out of things. Sure. Now, um, really, I wanted you to um, share some tips that can help, you know, um, those who in this situation, they can help them too. Do you have any tips you can share? You know, I would say communication with your, 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 your spouse or your, your, your partner, that is definitely great. The communication worked for, work wonders. Um, therapy also helped us. And I would say not only therapy with your spouse, but therapy for the whole family. One-on-one um, -on -one therapy, if you want to do group therapy, but one-on-one -on -one therapy, definitely, I, I would definitely recommend that. Um, because especially when you have teens, because teens are going through it, if there's a separation, you know, when everyone comes together, um, if you have, if you do have problems within the family with people not getting along, you know, that could be an issue. If you have kids that are, you know, teens, they have problems in school, you know, that's, that's a whole issue within itself, regardless if you have a blended family or not. Um, but, you know, therapy, I definitely, I highly recommend that. I can't stress that enough. Sure. Now, uh, in a blended family right? who comes first? In the blended family life, I, I'm going to say that in, in, in mine, um, the, the couple, my husband and I, we work together as a team. That's the reason why we got married, because we, we were a team and there was no separation between us. And even though in the beginning, the kids tried to kind of pick us apart um, through their own <laughs> selfish, <laughs> through their own selfish means. No, that's, that's just normal. <laughs> exactly, exactly, because they're kids. But it, it, didn't, it didn't work. We were a united front. And once they realized that, that, that was the end of that. It didn't work. <laughs> But oh, that, that goes to that communication. That that that's why your communication has to be on point. It has to be stellar. Awesome. Now, um, Nicole, um, let's talk about um, priority. Setting an LD um priorities, LD balance, right? Between your husband and your children, right? Um, if I decide to make my husband a priority, so what about the kids and the children? Well, if your husband, if you and your husband are on the same page, then you two, you two will make time for each other. You, you know when to make time for each other and you know when to make time for the kids. So no one is losing out. It's a win-win for everyone. So you'll have your, you know, your husband and wife quality time, and then you'll have your family time with the kids. And then you'll also, you know, you're paying enough attention where you'll know where if one kid needs a little more of, of something, you know, someone's always, you should be paying attention to everyone because usually there's one kid, especially if you have a lot. We had a, a, a blended family of seven, um, but all of them weren't in the house at the at the same time because two of them were much older than the other ones. Um, that someone may be a little younger than the rest of them, and and someone may be need a little more cuddling than the other ones do. So <laughs> it, it, it you know it it all depends. Yeah, it, that requires a little more work and a little more time. 
or you That's know right. someone may need a little more tucking in than the other ones mm. so i but you know um your kids you should definitely know your kids and if you and your spouse are on the same page there you know there should be no one at odds and no one should be feeling left out and that's right no one should feel left out at any time that's right thank you once again uh, nicole Odom hadnet for your insight on the topic of discussion now blended bonus family right um nicole let's get real here right um, have you ever had an experience um where your blended family just won't blend you said when am i i'm sorry say that one more time yeah have you ever had an experience where your blended family just won't blend at all no not as of yet i haven't had that experience there awesome. have been <laughs> i hope i never come across that <laughs> awesome all right uh, thank you once again for that now do you have any projects you're working on um i do i'm actually working on a summit um that will be coming up in october and I have a couple more oh. books that will be coming out. Right. I wish you best of luck in the project, right? Thank you. So what are the parting words you like to share with my audience? Oh, I would say don't give up on your blended family if you are, you know, struggling because it is a work in process. It doesn't happen overnight if you are having a hard time or any difficulties. Uh, I know there was a, a moment in time where I just thought about throwing in the towel and that was very early on. I would say my probably my first year in, it took probably almost two years before I, I saw that ray of sunshine um, peeking through. But once it did, it was definitely well worth it. And, you know, I came out on the other side. And, you know, where I am now, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Oh, sure. I, I think that um, um, it's always a game of the mind, right? If you prepared for something, right, and success is inevitable. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah, All so right. definitely don't give up. That's right. Thank you for that um, motivating line. Do you have, uh, I know you have a social media. Yeah. And uh, can you let uh, my audience have one? I do. So I'm at uh, talk to talk to Nicole um, O H. Um, that's my Instagram and um, Facebook. Right. And for my for my website, it's at uh, just talk to Nicole. Daska, right. Thank you once again. Yeah, it's really appreciate your time on today. The show really had a worthwhile time. I tell you, right? I wish you best of luck always and your future. Your interviews, right? Right. So it's been like well, I'm a TV. Thank you, Nicole, for joining me on the show today, right? And thank you all for listening on the show today. Now, you can catch up these episodes on social media platforms or online. Search for Live Well Lynch by Mobile TV on any podcast distribution platforms. And you have a worthwhile listening experience as you do so. So, like, anyway, I need to see if always start here, sir. <laughs>